Good morning, everybody. I got my coffee. I got my vape. Let's talk a little. Last week, we talked about emotion control, how others control you through your emotions, a little bit of science behind emotions, and how you can control your emotions. Well, this week, I want to talk a little bit about how I figured out how to choose my experience, how to choose my emotions, how to change my emotions at will. Before we do that, though, let's take a big old sip. The first way that I came across this was I started exploring how people felt when they heard certain music or they saw certain art or they read a poem or they watched a movie. How the artist, writer, or musician knew how to bring you in that experience and make you feel the way they wanted you to feel. That was huge for me as an early creator. And as I started doing this, I started realizing that there are actual formulas to make people feel different ways. In music, there are certain intervals. An interval is the distance between one note and the next note. And depending on that interval and its placement and its syncopation, it can bring about a certain experience. Start noticing theme music to videos and movies and things like that. You'll start to recognize that there is a certain pattern to the music. They kind of sound similar, especially Disney films. As I was discovering these patterns, I realized that I can do the same thing to choose what I want to experience. Now, it's not using the same techniques, although some of them would kind of (laughs) work. You know, I could sing a happy song and it'd make me feel better, but that's not exactly what I had in mind. So why would I want to do this? Why would I want to spend all this time to change my emotions? Why? when I just want to feel the way I feel and go through life and experience life as it comes. There's a lot to be said for that, but there's also a lot to be said for being able to be in control of my phobias. That was a huge one for me, major motivator. I could have a more fulfilling and joyful life. If I choose what I experience in a certain situation, I could be either happy or sad, mad or excited. Then I would always want to be happy and joyful and excited. Now that doesn't mean Pollyanna. There's a difference between that. We'll probably talk about that in another coffee with Phil. Speaking of coffee, I'm going to have another sip real quick. So why would I want to do this? As I said, I could control my phobias. I could control the quality of my life. I could relate to others better. One thing I discovered about my social phobias I was concentrating on me all the time and not concentrating on other people. One of the tricks that I used to be able to get over my phobias was to be concentrating on other people more. And by controlling my emotions, I was able to be focused on them and was able to relate to them better. And another thing that's a personal decision for me is I don't feel like I have any right to impose how I feel on somebody else's experience. If somebody is excited about something that's kind of eh to me, I don't have the right to rain on their parade. I don't have the right to be angry and violent around my wife. I don't have a right to do that. Now you may choose differently. That's great. That's your life. You choose it. But I choose to be a thermostat that controls the temperature in the room as opposed to a thermometer that just responds to the temperature in the room. Does that make sense? Another thing I discovered as I was doing this is I could be self-motivated. As a musician and a creative person, the biggest thing that gets in your way is if you have to be motivated, you have to be in the mood to create. Somebody who creates on a regular basis doesn't do that. They figure out how to make themselves motivated to be creative. And through learning and reading, I figured out that having a positive mental attitude Not only were other people going to treat me better, which was going to open me up to better opportunities, I was going to be in a better frame of mind so that I could see other opportunities and I was going to be able to create positive opportunities. And that is definitely a subject for another Coffee with Phil. Let's take a sip. So one of the biggest things I figured out (laughs) 
was something that I already knew, and that was laughter is the best medicine. I actually did an experiment with myself. I was really down in the dumps. I was really having a terrible day. I was angry. I felt like people were taking advantage of me. I was just having a horrible day, and I wanted to change it. And I thought, well, what if I just start laughing? Not out loud, because people were going to think I was crazy. <laughs> but I just kind of smiled and laughed to myself. And I did this until just for a split second, I felt great. And it didn't last long. Like I said, it was a split second fleeting moment, but that let me know that I could do that. And so with practice, I started doing that more. I started laughing to myself, laughing at myself. <laughs> I started practice spontaneously smiling. If you ever see me in public, more than likely when I spot you, I'm gonna have a smile just automatically come to my face. Very young, I found a love for making people laugh. If you can make somebody laugh, it is the best experience in the world. It's just, it's amazing, especially if you can trigger a laugh and the next thing you said, and you just kind of build on it and build on it until basically you could sneeze and they'd laugh. It's just so amazing. So I learned early in life how to see things that were funny. Well, I just expounded on that. I started seeing humor in every situation. Now, I wouldn't necessarily express or share that because there are some situations that it's just not appropriate. But I would tell myself jokes about what I saw constantly. And then I got somewhat good at being able to have the timing and, and relate that to somebody else. But you know what? If you can't tell a really good joke, you can definitely tell a really good joke to yourself. Something that I really had to figure out with trial and error is when to take a break, when to back off of something. Hopefully before I start throwing tools around and cussing really loud. Now, Tony Robbins was probably the first person that I heard talk about the physicality of emotions, how you can control emotions by your physical. The next time you're sad or you're pensive, just take a second, be that outside person looking in and just take assessment of how are you sitting? Your head's probably down, you're probably looking down, your shoulders are probably humped over, you're not giving yourself enough space to breathe, you're feeling weak, and when you're feeling positive and happy, just take a little second if you can think about it or just watch somebody else and see how you're postured. Your shoulders are probably gonna be back, your chest is gonna be out, you're gonna have lots of room to breathe, you're gonna look powerful. Well, guess what? You can turn that around. Instead of having those things happen because of how you feel, you can mimic those physicalities and create how you're gonna feel. You know, it's really difficult to smile and feel bad. It really is. And I think it's absolutely impossible to laugh and feel anything but happy, <laughs> even for a split second. So I started taking advice from these books and from mentorship to just do things like spread your arms up wide, stand up, look at yourself in the mirror, put out your fists and just say yes and throw your hands up in the air. First of all, you're going to feel kind of silly. But after you do that for a few times, you're going to start feeling more confident. If you're feeling kind of insecure, throw your shoulders back, stand up straight. Maybe sit with your arms out. Give yourself a little bit of that open posture and it really, really, really helps. Also, if I haven't got enough sleep, if I'm not hydrated, if my muscles are hurting, there's a lot of things that can hinder me to being able to control my emotions. So any of those that I have control over, I try to get myself in the habit of controlling them. And if you wanna know one of the best sources of information to get all that from, it's a little book that you may have heard me talk about called The Little Voice Mastery. <laughs> I'm going to do a call with Phil on that book one of these days, but don't wait for it. Go find it. If you need a link, just ask me and I'll be able to get it for you. So let's take another sip of coffee because that makes me happy. Emotions are very important. They're not something that you can do without. They have a, a special reason. They define our humanity. They make us who we are. They help us to share experiences with others. Like I was talking about how people create music and literature and movies and art 
to help to express to you the emotions that they are feeling. They're the best way to do that. They are a tool. And like any tool, how well that tool works depends on how well I use them. So you have a choice. I have a choice. Whatever choice you make is absolutely fine and perfect for your experience. I choose to be in control of my emotions. I choose to be in control of my future. I choose to be in control of my life experiences. And I choose to be in control of my presence in the world. So I choose to be in control of my emotions. Let's take one more step. Now, if you're new to my channel, please take a look around. If you like this video, then I hope you're gonna like some of my other ones. If you do, please consider subscribing. Hit that thumbs up or thumbs down. Give me some great comments or give me some, I don't believe you at all, Phil. You are just wacky and off in some la la land somewhere. That's fine. But definitely leave in the comments what your experiences are with emotions. Get a hold of me. Let's start a discussion. Also consider sharing this. That would help me out a whole lot and I would really appreciate it. Make sure you hit that ringy dingy thing so you're notified the next time I make a video. And as always, no matter what tune that life plays you, especially if it's a happy tune, find your groove. Thanks for hanging out with me and drinking some coffee and talking about emotions. I'll talk to you later.